hi welcome to my channel I'm Misha thank you for clicking on this video um, I assume since you're here you want to learn about how to make art maybe specifically portraits using chisel tip markers I know that there have to be people who are like me when I first started out with markers who have chisel tip markers and don't really know what to do with them so I am making this video to show you my technique I would describe my portraits as like semi-realistic like they're not fully realistic but you know they look kind of real <laughs> they're not really cartoony so um if you want to see how I do those practices or how I practice that and don't let the hard edges that chisel tips give you chisel tip markers give you get to me then keep on watching all right, step one is the sketch. So I usually like to start off with a light graphite pencil. I find that this makes for the best finishing drawing, although, you know, stylistically, this for me at least is a practice, and so you can kind of use whatever pencil you want. Just nothing too dark if you prefer. I don't usually like to keep an outline, and so I get rid of all the outlines pretty much <laughs> so you know I try to use a 4H actually when I can get my hands on it um, but you know try to use a lighter hand if you don't have access to a lighter pencil additionally you want to be very careful about erasing because using an eraser will compromise the integrity of your paper um, which also you want to have some kind of thick paper I like to use cardstock and it wasn't very expensive and I've had it for a very long time so I'm not exactly sure the price but I brought it from Michaels um, but even that paper if you do too much erasing then you'll start to see some of the paper come up and that's not what you want because the marker reacts differently to compromise paper <laughs> additionally you would like you should in theory spend a lot of time on your sketch maybe not so much for a practice but i would like to say that i do do commissions so for those i generally spend almost as much time on the sketch as i do coloring in with the markers because i find that to be a very important step doing your sketch will help to give you a good grasp on where you need to go next um but the sketch doesn't have to be perfect you don't need to include every single line like if there's a line here you don't have to include that you just kind of want to get the gist but get it really well like you want those shapes to be pretty close to where they should be be careful about erasing step two is colors now I'm looking down because I have some notes here. I actually have a lot of notes for step two. Um, my first note would be to pick your colors before you start drawing. I actually find that to be very important. If you see in the video, I actually started off by doing some swatches on the page. And I only did it on the page because this is a practice, but I actually cut that piece of paper in half. I would have just used the other half to do my swatches, but I'll just use it for a different practice at a different time. Um, now, I find that it is important that you start with the lightest color and then go darker. So in areas where there are where there is lightness that's where you want to start so I generally like to start around here and bridge of the nose so after you add the lightest color as you're moving into the darker colors you're gonna want to overlap the layers or the different colors but just a little bit in the beginning because later on you're gonna do a little bit more overlapping that's gonna make it look more realistic and help those colors to melt together um, so once the colors are laid down, this is like after you put the light, medium, or mid-tones and the dark tones, you're going to want to do um, another layer, as I just mentioned. 
and in this layer you will really kind of focus in on the dark accents so I added in some eyelashes and you might want to do like the really really dark shadows since generally I won't use black as my darkest tone unless I'm doing really dark skin but even then I still try to stay away from black as my darkest skin tone and just use it for very specific accents so as you can see there was a very part of my portrait that was really dark on the side of the face and I didn't use black I used a really dark brown so if you can find a really dark brown then that would be really helpful um, and then I just like to do a background it helps to kind of tie everything in like the sketch was very very sketchy as you can tell but you know it came out I think better once I added the pink background um, few notes about this step. The lines won't ever really be fully blended so you kind of have to get over that a little bit. Like they'll be blended to the point where it's you can understand what you're looking at but it's not going to be just totally soft. Maybe the way that some artists um what is it called the <laughs> the felt tips <laughs> look. It's never going to be a felt tip marker, but you know there are ways to trick the eye using the chisel tip. Um, additionally, you want to be very careful about laying because layering, excuse me, because you can end up overworking a piece, and when you do that, it kind of has a similar effect to when you do too much erasing. I try not to do more than three layers, but. You know as you're learning try layering as much as you can and just see how that affects it and see just how far certain different types of papers will take you um, and another tip is to remember to try to find where each color should go ahead of time so when you're doing your sketch you want to not only have in mind the shapes but also the way that they're formed so you see the nose is you know there's a line down the middle there's two parts on the side this part is a little bit darker so you know those kinds of things because like where things are darker they'll sink in lighter they'll come forward as I'm sure you already know I don't have to tell you that but you know just try to keep those things in mind from the beginning um, my final step which is done like right before i photograph my work is to or right before i do a good photograph i take a simple photograph or i step back a few steps and take a look at it from there because there are usually a couple of things that i didn't notice while i was doing the piece that i noticed afterwards and so you know that's kind of more so for when i'm doing commissioned work when I'm not, I don't really stress it too much. So this one, I didn't do that, but you know, it can be very helpful to take a look at your work from afar. And then you can find like, sometimes I'll find that there are whole areas that I didn't color in or didn't color properly or just that needs more values. So I think in the portrait that I'm working on, like there's something about one of the eyes that's a little bit weird that could be better that I saw once I started editing this video so those kinds of things you can look out for um, and finally I just have some overall tips number one don't fear the marker lines there's gonna be lines but like I said earlier if you can kind of trick the eye it's not that big a deal Number two, you can use white to cover mistakes, but I try to do it very sparingly. I also don't really leave a white tone on the page if I can help it. There's never really anything that needs to be that highlighted that it should be white. And I find that all the colors blend together a lot better if the white tone is not there. Uh, number three, power through any dryness I, don't, I have to say I don't know if you can tell but 
this video is where I found out that all of my markers, which I hadn't touched them in quite a while, they're all dry. Every single one of them is dry except for like that pink and the red for this shirt. All of them are dry and they still, you know, they still worked out. So, you know, you can still get work done even when your markers are drying out, but you know, try to get them replaced because I think it does something to the, the actual nib. But all of my markers are inexpensive, so I didn't find it to be that big a deal. Um, and finally, I want to say quality level of materials don't matter all that much. I have, you know, I have a prism color here, and then I also have three, four Copics, something like that, a couple of these. But a lot of my markers are. What is this? Premier by Nicole. This is like a Michaels brand or something. And then I even have like this set that was like pink tones by whatever hobby color it is. They were really pretty and they came in a set for a couple of dollars. I might have gotten them from TJ Maxx. And all of these I find work the same. If anything, I find that I have the most trouble with my. Um, my Copics. I don't know if I call these prism colors. These are Copic markers. I find that I have the most trouble with these because they dry out. I actually cut out footage of me having to refill two of them, which I feel that I've refilled it like way more times than than I've refilled anything else. And I I got the Copics last year, and I got my other like pretty much every other marker back in 2015, 2016, and they're still not going strong, but you know, they're still alive. I still got the drawing done. So, you know, materials don't matter, especially when you're practicing as much as you might be led to believe. So have fun, keep drawing, do your best, and try out my tips. I think they'll be very helpful in not only doing your drawing but also changing your state of mind and what you think that you're looking for in a piece so thanks for watching have a great day